All right, hello, welcome to the stream with me, Rachel. Um, today we're gonna be continuing in our JavaScript learning journey. Um, welcome everybody, I wanna just double check, I'm not gonna get that echo again, I think I solved it. There we go, okay. Um, and we will be uh, continuing to work on what we worked on yesterday, which is basically we found a JavaScript package that'll do what we want, um, which is part of speech tagging. And what I want to do is get the part of speeches out so that I can uh, find the pronouns and replace them with other different pronouns uh, for the purposes of anonymization. So, so far we got this. I'll show you what that looks like. Uh, so if I put uh, he's over here, that should be changed to they's over here because I'm just using a regular expression to find he and replace it. Uh, and I can also uh, make this uppercase and it will also be changed, but it doesn't preserve the casing of the original statement. So that's where we are right now. And I would prefer to do this not with a bunch of regular expressions uh, and instead do it with um, a part of speech tiger so that I can find all the pronouns and replace all the pronouns. And the reason that we're doing this is as a in-browser privacy preserving anonymizer. So basically, doing pronoun replacement is going to be the easiest first step. Um, and then if I continue working with this project, I'll work on like proper names. Uh, and yesterday we got sort of got stalled trying to get node uh, package manager npm installed. Uh, hi, Derek, welcome to the stream. And that didn't happen. And uh, Peter, who I mentioned, uh, uh, Peter Vera, who I mentioned in the last stream is a uh, an engineer I've worked with before who mainly works with JavaScript, so uh, is pretty knowledgeable. It was like, hey, you can just uh, actually import the code into your project instead of uh, uh, instead of going through and doing the the NumPy stuff. And I don't think we actually got NumPy all the way ran. So I mentioned on Twitter I've been having some network issues, and I think if I just tried to do something with like. NumPy, it's not going to work. Oh, never mind. That worked. Um, okay, so we got the Node Package Manager installed, so we can use that. Uh, hi, Game Love. Good to see you. Hey, hey, Peter. Uh, that's who I was talking about on on YouTube. The same Peter. Um, however. There is a thing that is, I don't know if it's a problem, but it's a thing that's true about this particular package, this uh, what's called JSPOS, I think. I put a link in here above because past Rachel looked at current Rachel, who at the time was future Rachel, and was like, she's going to need some help remembering the exact URL. So I wrote it down. Again, if you are setting up a development environment, I highly recommend just writing down everything you do to make your life easier in the future. And this is licensed with a license that is incompatible with the current license that we're using. So this is the LGPL license. Um, so commercial use, modification, distribution, patent use, private use. I need to have my project under the same license. So if I use this code, I can do that, it's perfectly fine, but I will need to change the license that my code is currently under from Apache 2.0 to this license. Um, and like, probably nobody's gonna sue me for anything, but you know, it's good to practice good hygiene and you never know, somebody else may wanna like take this project, continue building on it. Like I've open sourced it as I've been working on it. Um, so I think it is, um, it's on my GitHub, <laughs> which is RC Tavern. Um, so I just don't wanna, I don't wanna set anybody up to have a bad time. So if we're gonna use this library, we're gonna have to change our license. Which should be pretty easy and I'm just gonna have to do it with the next push. Um, so what I will do is right now, let me pull up my GitHub in another, uh, another tab. Sorry, I'm always a little bit leery about pulling up my GitHub because I want to make sure that you only see information that is public. <laughs> this is the one. Yeah, so if I look at my 
get in there. So if you look at uh, this right now, it has a license and the license is Apache 2.0. So I'm going to need to change this. Can I actually just do this like super easily in here? Is that a thing that I can do? Nope. Okay, so I'm just gonna have to change this license um, when I push to GitHub and I'll just need to remember to do that. But I think from here, we should be able to just install it and then use it. So let's see if that works. Uh, so it was npm install POS. POS here standing for uh, part of speech because this is a part of speech tagger. Um, I know it also stands for like point of sale and some other stuff. Uh, that was fast as hell. Cool. That was extremely easy. I'm used to Python installation, which is usually a little bit more uh, involved, especially if you ran into like the PIP, was it PIP 12 issue that there was happening for a little bit? I'll go to the other side. All right, so we're good to go there. So now we should be able to just use the sample code. Let's see if that works. So this is the sample code right from the repository. Make sure it's not behind me. Uh, so I'm going to need to require a package. I don't know where good, uh, JavaScript code form suggests this works. Uh, Peter says, see if you have a new node modules folder. Control B. Oh, that's right. We're looking at extensions. Yep, sure do. And it's right in here. Oh, this is that package.json thing that people keep talking about where you specify the um, the information. Oh, wait, and here's the license, which is great. So I'm just going to copy this in here. <laughs> then delete you. Yeah, get rid of that. And then rename F2. I don't know why I can remember that, probably because it is not especially memorable. Okay, so I can use this code. I just need to have the same license, uh, which is what I was doing. Uh, yep, and it is there. Thank you, Peter. So now I should be able to... Oh, get rid of that. I need the screen real estate. and I don't need to have the license open. Uh, so I should be able to just put the requirements maybe here at the beginning of my script before I do anything else. Nope. <laughs> That's the wrong, uh, that's the wrong window. I want this window. There we go. Uh, okay. So I already have a way to get the text in. So this text is going to need to be, I'm just going to copy and paste all of this. Um, so this is all in a function that called repeat input. And I think what I want to do is create a new function called, um, I don't know, something. Let's give it a name. So we're going to call it, create a new function, function, and let's call it uh, test POS. Again, POS stands for part of speech. Uh, and all this stuff goes in it. Oh. All right, and then um, so we have this repeat input is triggered on the click. So I'm also going to add another event. So when I do the exact same thing, I'm also going to do this test POS function. So they both get run on the same event. Hopefully that's fine. We'll find out. All right, we're just guessing and testing. We're trying stuff out, seeing what works. So my guess is that you can have multiple things happen on a specific event because I've seen that happen in web pages. So I'm guessing that's a thing you can just do. Um, and then what we want to do is we have this. And I'm going to do the same getting the text in. 
because I'm guessing that getting the text in, it doesn't seem to V, there we go. It doesn't seem to remove it because when we look at this, right? Uh, the test thing here is not actually uh, deleted. Okay, but we're no longer getting results out. Mm. Okay, so something in doing this new function has created a place where so the text is still there. Get an LN ID results. Text in. And we ha still have that result field up here. So if I create a new thing called result, like underscore part of speech to print out the part of speech stuff. Anyway, I'm going to try to do all the things that I think I need to do to get this to work. And then I'm going to try and figure out why it's not. Uh, so Right now, all of this is being added to console.log. So this is just all being written. And for right now, I don't actually think I need it to be, is it this one? Nope. Is it this one? Yep. Uh, so right now, I don't think I actually need it to be, can I block comment? Shift Alt A. Will I remember that? Probably not. All right. Um. So right now, I don't think I actually care about that uh, tag word. All right, so I'm just going to print out tagged word. And the way that I'm going to get that is in uh, I'm going to have tagged word b. Uh, in this tagged words variable. And you know what we're not going to do is try and type it a bunch of times and give ourselves, I'm just going to get the first element. And I'm going to do assignment using var because that seems to be the standard. And then I'm just going to print out the whole thing to this result POS, which is right below the result. So my guess is that this should work. And the reason we might be having problems is that we're trying to do two things on a click on the same event, perhaps. So let's see if this works first. All right, that don't do nothing. Uh, so if I remove that, do I still get, so let's try commenting out this line and see what happens. That doesn't work. Hmm. Interesting, okay. So what if I comment out this line? That also doesn't work. Hmm. Where can I see my logs? Peter says, there's a lot of stuff going on here. It requires part of the Node API. This package author is assuming that you're running inside of Node. Okay. So it's probably actually this bit that is causing us to give get errors. <laughs> Excuse me. Mm -mm 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 -mm. So what if 
So just looking in here, uh, we have this part of speech tagger file. Okay, require Brill transformation rules, which is here. So I would need this and this. And then require lexicon, prototype, <laughs> from Lisp. Uh, whoo, that's a that's a blast from the past. Um, I do know people still use Lisp, and if you do, I am not saying that you are old fashioned. I'm just saying it's been a while since I have run into somebody talking about Lisp code, and this is not a value judgment. Okay. Initialize side sentence with words. Oh, it is an array. All right, so we were working, talking about this yesterday and we could have just looked at the code and that would have answered our question. Um, also, all of this is um, why I didn't want to write this myself because it's a lot. Okay, we got a little, a little commented out uh, print uh, debugging statement. Always love to see, makes me feel nice and at home. Uh, the JavaScript console is part of the browser's dev tools. This browser preview plugin may have an integration with VS Code and might be pushing logs to the VS Code console. That's new. Okay, so now if I try to do some stuff in here, will I see it? No. <laughs> okay, fun. Uh, helpful. I was being a little bit facetious, but not that facetious. Um, it is helpful to know what's not working as well. Uh, boop, 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 boop. So how did it require... Oh, this is my code. Uh, how did it require a different file? Because I think that might just be the easiest bits. Although I think Peter mentioned that require is a thing that works within Node, which I don't, I've installed it. I don't think I'm using it. Um, oh, there's so much going on. Uh, JavaScript import code from another file question mark, endpoint functions from another file in JavaScript. That is in fact what I am looking for. We're in Stack Overflow. I have a question about including a file in JavaScript. I have a very simple example. Uh, of course, it's a property, blah, 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 blah. When I remove the import from student, I don't receive the error anymore. I have tried to use require import include create a custom bunch and export and none of this has worked for me. How do I fix it? The following works for me in Chrome and Firefox. In Firefox, it even works from file. Export function course, this.id, this name. Do I have to export each of the functions separately? Because that seems like a big pain in the butt. Also, it doesn't work for this person. So helpful. All right. Import square diag from functions.js. You can also import completely. Normally we use dot slash file name.js for importing own JS file slash module and file name dot js for importing package library module. Okay. When you include main.js file to web page, you must set up the type module to allow the attribute as follows. By default, scripts can't handle imports like that directly. You're probably getting another error about not being able to use course or not doing it during the import. If you add type equals module to your script tag and change the import to course JS because browsers won't auto append to the .js portion, then the browser will pull down course for you and it'll probably work. Okay. Oh, that's weird. So this script, no, okay, I can. <laughs> I was like, so you're saying this script section here can cross, can like 
start in the head and then end in the body because I just saw this and it, I don't think it can. That makes very little sense that it would do that. All right, so I think this is going to be the thing that we do. Okay. If you're serving files over, so some IDEs have a way to run a quick server. You can also write a quick express server to serve your files. It's all Node.js, so you have it. It did not work and throws an extra exception. Cool, 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 cool. Cool. Neato. Fun. Uh, <laughs> how to use Node to import a package for beginner. Using import statements in Node.js. I don't, because the thing is, I don't think I'm actually using Node. I think I installed it, but I don't think I'm actually using it. Like, I don't have an environment set up or anything. And, like, if you just install Conda or, you know, VN or whatever you're using to set up a virtual environment and you don't, like, initialize the environment, nothing happens. And it feels like it should, that should be part of it, right? Like, it feels like there should be another step beside just installing it because it seems like it's an environment thing and not just, like, you know, I thought this was going to be very analogous to pip, and I don't think it is. Is where I am for now. Node.js yes, removes the need for the experiment mode to multiply. Okay, so you need to do exporting. Has any of these things been exported? This is my code. Have any of these things been exported? module dot exports post tagger function post tagger okay and then these are oh okay i've seen this like prototype thing before um and i don't know what it means so i'm going to add it to my list of things to look up um Because I saw that when I was looking up other functions. So I'm guessing that it's some sort of like prototype, um, some sort of specific built in or like thing in JavaScript that I don't know about. Uh, and I'd like to know about it because it seems important. Uh, okay, so that's that. So the exporting has been done. And then I need to import it. To import a module you installed you can import the package name. The below example shows how you can import Mongoose. Takes <laughs> Node.js takes care of the quirks of interoperability between CommonJS and ESM. I don't know what that is. <laughs> I also don't know what that is, so that's helpful. Um, uh, Peter says you can circumvent Node by using the original package from Google instead of the POSJS. It's expecting to be run in a browser. Okay, interesting. Oh, actually, we can go go back here. So um, this is a fork of another internal server error. Cool. <laughs> uh is it because my internet is down? No, nope, stream is healthy. Okay, let me see if I can find more information. All right. Uh, let's see. It's available on Google Code. There we go. Okay, so the uh, this was the... Um, URL linked in the GitHub repo, and that is not the correct URL. The correct URL is uh, blah, 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 code.google.com slash archive slash p slash jspos. When I'm guessing that's for like package. Okay. JavaScript part of speech tagger. Uh, JavaScript part of Mark Watson's fast tag part of speech tagger itself based on Eric Brill's work. 
includes a simple lexer for splitting a text string into words and other taggable tokens. All right. That is what I'm looking for. Should be fast enough for many uses. Okay, that's pretty, that is pretty fast for I think the time when this was written, which would have been 2011. Um, now you can do things much faster. Also, I, I don't know that I'd recommend using JavaScript for your NLP pipeline. I am trying to learn JavaScript and NLP is something I already know about, so that's why I'm doing it, but um, probably would not be the first thing I would go to personally. All right. Oh, and this is based on a LGBL. Same, 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 same license. Okay, so we're good in the licensing department because we've already updated our license. So that is good. Um, I guess let's look at the source. That's a, that's a lot of files. Okay. Uh, can I, I have to download the code all at once. Cool. This is the face I'm making as I'm trying to decide whether I want to do this or whether I want to just like see if I can find a list of pronouns and do that instead. Because I'm thinking that that might be a little bit easier, especially because this is not like a project I intend to work on and maintain long term. Um, and right now I am mostly learning about package management in JavaScript. And my current state of thought on it is that it is going to make me feel tired. <laughs> Uh, and it's going to be sort of hard to do something lightweight just locally to see if I can get it working. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> there's a download section that has a smaller package. Yeah. Oh, downloads. There we go. Uh, okay. And this is the most recent version from 2012 when I was just starting to get into NLP. All right, well, let's start that downloading and see what we learn from that, because that might be uh, the simplest thing for us to do. Meanwhile, I want to find a list of, uh, list of, oh, actually, I can probably find a JavaScript pronouns array. I don't know. I don't know what sort of thing you would put it in. Um, I think probably just like finding a list of pronouns and then figuring it out from there would probably be the simplest thing. So a uh, list of pronouns, uh, English pronouns. Because I don't care about all pronouns in all languages. Uh, all right, so we got one from the free dictionary. All right, so we've got some personal pronouns, subject pronouns, object pronouns, possessive pronouns, reflexives, indefinite. These ones I don't care about. I only care about the ones that uh, directly refer to people. Uh, archaic pronouns. Cool. So this is not, in fact, a list of all pronouns. This is a list of some pronouns. Uh, and what I'm actually looking for is uh, a list that includes neo pronouns as well. So because, as I mentioned last week, neo pronouns are especially identifying. So I want to be able to, like, convert all of them. Uh, so let me actually really quickly do some secret stuff and see how this download's going.
Right, we're good. Sorry, I was just poking around in my file system. I wanted to save it in here directly. And did I remember where I put this project? Nope, did not. Uh, POS Google. 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 All right, and I should be able to just, I think, paste right in here. Can I? Can I just scoot you all right in there? Just all tuck you in, all nice and nice and cozy. There we go. All right. Let's see this read me. Um, blah, blah, blah. Same thing that it was before. Lexicon.js, JavaScript's version of Eric Brill's English lexicon. Lexer.js, Lexer to break sentence into taggable tokens. POS tagger.js, the part of Screech Tagger. You'll typically need to include all three files. OK. And then here is the usage. And then the list of the pronouns, uh, list of the pronouns, list of the tags, which as I mentioned are from Pen Tree Bank. So from here, I think what I need to do is first of all, unhide my chat so I can see everybody. Uh, <laughs> Pika Pika says, secret stuff, you know, say is watching. No, I just don't want to accidentally like, you know, I don't know. I worry all the time about like accidentally showing stuff that I, I don't want to show. So um, I just try to be a little bit conservative. Uh, <laughs> uh, Peter says, agree about not learning package management. It's not beginner friendly. This package predates most package management implementations. So it should be the simplest case. Oh, thank you. Uh, Chen Daniel says, what are you building to learn JavaScript? Great question. Um, we are building a little mini text anonymizer. Uh, so actually, let's get back in this. Uh, so ideally, what we want to do is replace all English pronouns, uh, uh, personal pronouns, so like pronouns that refer to people, uh, with third person plural, so he, they. This is going to, uh, I should say, excludes neo pronouns. Um, we might be able to include them by adding them to our um, adding them to our Lexer, um, which is like old way of saying tokenizer, basically. Um, sorry, <laughs> I got some like uh, annoying animations in another window, which is why I reacted like that. Uh, I think I'm just going to like uh, mention that it excludes neo pronouns right now, because as I mentioned uh, a while ago, neo pronouns tend to be pretty identifying. All right, so. I think what we need to do from here is, let's pull my files again, move me so I'm not in front of them. Um, so I think what we do want to do from here is we need to get, well, let's check the readme. Lexicon.js, Lexer, excuse me, JS, and post tagger JS. So the lexicon, the lexer, and the POS tagger. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm guessing that these need to be in the same uh, file as my uh, my HTML, I'm guessing. Uh, and then the readme says, you'll typically need to include all three files. So I'm wondering if there's something specific I have to do to include it or whether like the script just automatically goes and finds them. I don't know. Uh, yeah, so the syntax I think should be relatively similar. So let me first of all get rid of this because I uh, Peter mentioned that require is a node thing, and we're not using node. Uh, use script tags to include those files. No, the readme. I want my learning guide. Nope, not that one. There we go. Script tags. So from what I know of, uh, oh no, uh, from what I know of HTML, that's gonna be a tag that goes here in the script. So I'm just gonna look up how to do that real quick. Um, script tag to include JS file. All right, and we have a JavaScript question on Stack Overflow from eight years ago. So about the uh, about the right time period, because that would have been 2012. It's now, yeah, so this would have been roughly in the same like four year chunk. Uh, 
Um, okay, so I can include something as a source, I guess. Problem is, is I guess I end up with this. You can't do this. You can't add script tags and execute them by writing the HTML. If you must load the scripts dynamically, you should add them to the DOM, the document object model. Uh, you can try this to load an external script file and execute the method. What it basically does is create a new script element dynamically and appends it to the DOM. It then sets an onload event handler, which would fire once the script is downloaded completely. So the script is being added to the DOM, but it is being added at the bottom, meaning after the script that needs to access it. Any chance can it be placed at a particular slot or even at the top since it doesn't depend on any other script. Wait, but this is a function, and we know from hoisting that functions are loaded into memory first, so it shouldn't matter that it gets um, put at the bottom of the script. That should be okay. Hey, Marco. Uh, okay, so I think we can use this approach. What you can do is queue up other scripts that depend on this one on the onload event, but I wouldn't recommend that since it will take forever to load. A better option would just be to create a flag variable and set it to true in the onload event handler. Then you can check for the flag at any dependent script and use it if it's still you. OK. Uh, and we have reached the point at which my eyes glaze over. Let's see this code, uh, if this code will work for us. Place the document write example and then remove the script. OK. Dasker is trying to implement a package management system. Their first snippet should work for your case. Uh <laughs> <laughs> Marco says, oh, this is JavaScript. That language is a mess. Um, I would say that so far I am developing an understanding of why it is the way that it is. Uh, yeah. The first snippet should work for your case. So write strings within the strings of the content, which gets the next year. I'm this snippet or this snippet? I think maybe this snippet. I feel like good about this snippet. Um, so I'm going to see if this works. <laughs> I'm just going to give it a shot. We'll see what happens. Uh, OK, so the. Uh, script tag is going to go in here, except instead of example content, our content that we actually want to load in is called the POS tagger dot JS. Yeah, the second line from the question. This one. Okay, good. I feel better about that. Um, <laughs> Marco says, bad decisions by Ike in the Netscape back in the day, and then just technical debt. Yeah, it definitely feels like Mm. I, I tweeted about this. I definitely feel like, especially like going through the, the built-ins and functions and whatnot, um, like I'm looking at a bunch of like pot shards. It is shards, not shards. Uh, took me a long time to figure that out in my <laughs> archaeology reading. Why am I reading archaeology? Because I think it's cool. Shut up. Um, sorry, I don't mean to tell you shut up. But uh, like I can tell that these things are all coming from different sources and like different contexts, but they're being treated in the same way now. Um, and that there's like, there were a bunch of decisions that I'm sure made sense at the time. And as a result, we have like a big jumble of things now. And that's my, my impression. Okay, so let's try. Could I just type it out instead of trying to do something uh, like this, I could probably. Do I need to have them all or will it just work? I guess we'll find out. Okay. So let's get rid of this. Let's pop this open, move myself to the other side. Uh, and I'm just gonna see if our uh, code works again. It don't, okay, that's okay. So we have, Mm 
Maybe the problem is that I am uh, creating this two times, which I don't need to do because I'm assigning it using var, which means that it should be hoisted. So I think maybe this might be my problem. So I'm just going to get rid of that because I don't think I actually need it twice. And I think I can replace this. Maybe I should put this in a second script. One sec. How do you know when to add another script in JavaScript? How do I include a JavaScript file in another JavaScript file? Uh, how to redirect to another page? Calling a JavaScript file in another file? JavaScript variables? Cool. <laughs> that wasn't really my question. Um, my so the the thing that I'm wondering about here is uh, on click function jQuery. Are you saying it's this one, or are those just examples of things where like there were a bunch of things that were created in different contexts? Yeah, Microsoft influenced a lot as they had their take <laughs> uh, take as well. They had their take on it in the late '90s import function. Okay, so I need to do the imports for the specific functions I'm using? Question mark? Mm -hmm. JavaScript import. Import JavaScript. All right, and we're back to the Mozilla docs, uh, which I have been told are more up to date than the W3 school docs. Uh, Peter says, I suspect there are errors in your development console that will be relevant. There's nothing in here. Uh, is it in here? Please start a debug section to evaluate expressions. Don't know what that means. I don't know what that means. Clear console. There's nothing in the console. Output? No. Hmm. <laughs> uh, I mean, you're using the get element by ID. I would suggest three stars. I don't know what that means. <laughs> I think you've dramatically overestimated uh, the amount of context that I have here. Uh, we started on Monday and I've done it for, this is going to be the fourth hour total. Um, Okay, so I think what I'm gonna do is I wanna get my thing back to a state where it's working and then try and figure stuff out. So I'm gonna get rid of this function and I will put it in um, my learning plan. Uh, a graveyard is just a, a concept from editing where you have a big section at the end of a document where you put things you don't want to delete. Uh, all right, get rid of you. Peace out, bud. Put you in the graveyard. All right, and then get rid of these. Oh, oh. All right, and at this point, And you go in the graveyard, get out of here. So these are all the things that I added to try and get it to work that did not work, and that's okay. Um, we'll figure this out, that's all right. Okay, so at this point, it should work again. So if it doesn't work now, then the only thing that we've added that is new is having this source up here. So if I do this and I, yeah, He's here. This should be they's here. It don't. Okay. Helpful. And result, right? Result, right? Yes. Okay. 
So it's this, I think, that might be causing the issue. If I take, if I get rid of that, will it be fixed now? Okay, I've gotten it back to where it was when we started today, and now it works. So now I need to figure out how I made it not work and see if I can get it to work with the importing of the new code. Ooh. Um. Oh, <laughs> uh, it was a, uh, a link and the, it got censored. Uh, uh, try with free code camp. That was the idea. Okay. Um, well, it might be helpful. Uh, Daniel says, are you following a guide or are you, I want to do a thing that does this and working your way backwards. The second one. Uh, so I think it's helpful. Uh, open the browser preview. All right. So, and that was from Peter. Let's see if I can actually like get the, the output out. That would be helpful. So does anything show up when I do this? Nope. Not a thing. No problems have been detected. Cool. Oh, but I closed the window. Output, anything Anything here? Nothing. Debug console? Also nothing. I don't know why nothing's showing up. And it's it's cool, everything's fine. <laughs> um, yeah, because there's I get the sense that there's a lot of like putting things in the console, but I don't know where the console is for this. Like I don't know where it should be showing up and I don't see anything. And it could just be that it's there and I'm not finding it. Um, so that's where we are right now. Uh, use console.log to log the output. Yeah, but I don't know where, I don't know where it's being logged to is the problem, right? Like, um, here. Uh, so I'll, we'll just try to talk console.log this text in. And I think, let me see, do, 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 fix my white space. I know that that is optional, but I want to have good stylish code that looks good and that it does not make people physically upset when they read. So now if I open what I think is where it should be showing up and I start to do some stuff, do we, does anything show up? No, nothing shows up. What about in here? No, nothing shows up. What about in here? Also nothing. So I don't know where it should be showing up and I can't find it. And that's where we are right now. Um, in a browser and use the console there, the browser in the web dev tools console. Open the browser preview. So this is a browser, it is a browser preview. Cool. Uh, I don't especially want to open it in Chrome uh, if I can avoid it at all. And that might be the point where we're at now. I just have to do that. Right click on the browser preview and select inspect. Then you're going to see the output of the console log. Well, not. All right, one sec. I don't know how this is going to open. The answer was that it did, <laughs> it did not. Uh, cool. So that's where we are now. So I'm thinking that this is maybe like not a great fully featured way to do JavaScript development, but it's what I've uh, committed to at this point. Uh, use a real browser. You're trying not to open in Chrome. Yeah, like ideally. Um, also, like I am just like straight up running this script in this little browser preview and I I don't know a lot about security stuff, but I know that that's not like a great thing to just let a web browser do for, you know, any given page on the internet. So with that in mind, I think we're going to be flying blind a little bit. Oh, there's probably a better way to see, say that. Um, that does not, you know, imply that blindness is less than. Um, 
we're just gonna be trying to do this without having a lot of console logs because I genuinely do not know how to find them. Um, yeah. So, that's okay, that's no big. Let's see, I think a good uh, outcome from today, because we have a little learning plan here, um, is, yeah, so this is kind of not happening so far. I'm gonna write down what we tried though. So we have like a list of things that we tried. Tried importing files directly from the old version, old Google version, doesn't require node, and ran into not being able to see the console logs, uh, trying to launch browser led to a weird error. Uh, and the weird error was, uh, let's see, uh, this one, which I can't, uh, uh, the highlight to search, but, uh, windows cannot find web view panel, etc. Uh, so that's where we are with that. Close that weird windows error. Uh, so that's that problem. If you make a new terminal, can you see the log? I could not when I did it, uh, Angie. Uh, but I can try it again. Uh, Daniel says, if you open up the VS Code command palette, control shift P, you do have the option to create a JavaScript debug terminal. That's where we were is the thing, right? We were in, so right now this, I know that I'm way zoomed in, so you can't see very good. Um, this is the JavaScript debug terminal that I am looking at right here. So this is PowerShell. This is this, I can type in it. That's nothing, um, but nothing, Nothing is showing up there, and I don't know what should be showing up. And all I can see is like that it exists. So that's where we are right now. Uh, Peter says, I think your POS script tag has a syntax error. Oh, that could very well be it. So let's pop me over and look at these files again. So this is a thing that uh, I thought we had avoided on day one is this like package management and getting stuff to actually run. Uh, because as it turned out, I already had JavaScript downloaded and you probably do too, if you have a browser. But the downside is that now we are running into it and I thought we were past this. So if I wanted to, uh, <laughs> Daniel said, yeah, I don't know either. Yeah, it is. Um, I would say great minds think alike. We both tried the same thing. Uh, and uh, I ran into the same issues. So it makes me feel better about not being able to figure it out. So I think that works. All right, let's see if we can get these. All right, I'll try not to chew ice on the mic. I don't imagine that's very pleasant to listen to for most folks. Uh, you start import statement is used to import read only live bindings, which are exported by another module. My question is, did you export anything in here? Friends who made this? I don't see any export statements. So the answer might be no. Cool. <laughs> cool, 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 cool. Uh, oh, and this lexicon is just a list of words and then there, um, I believe this corresponds to one of the, um, um, tags in the pen tree bank. So it's just like a big list of words. Oh, and here's the list of tags. 
These have repetitions. These must be associated with specific... Um, these must be associated with specific sentences. So these are actually... That's not a sentence. None of those are sentences. Um, also, if you've noticed a lot of these look like they might be from the Wall Street Journal, um, good, good eye. I'm pretty sure that is what uh, the Pantry Bank is, uh, has been trained on. Uh, yeah. Apparently you need to run NumPy run start in the JavaScript console. Okay. So I'm trying to avoid using Node if I can. Also, that doesn't say uh, NumPy, it says NPM. Uh, I've just read it as NumPy for a very long time. So you can see like Apollo, um, different words that are pro-Soviet, like perhaps clearly from a domain that I am probably not going to be using in this project, shall we say? So, I think your script tag has a syntax error. So let's see if we can go back and figure out how to add it as a script tag. So this is an import statement, which requires that there are also export statements. And I don't think there's any of those. Yeah, so this is just like a flat file that has functions and like properties and objects and whatnot defined in it. Um, as opposed to this one, which has, if we look at this, which one, this one, uh, this one has done some exporting and has some exports in it. Um, so I don't think we need to import because we're not trying to get something that was originally exported. Using a script tag to import those files runs them like your inline script. They shouldn't need to export things and you shouldn't need to use the import syntax. Okay, good. So I was definitely on the right track there. And let me actually add that to my learning uh, doc as well, because I think that'll be helpful for me in the future. Um, imports only needed for stuff that's been exported first. Let me go to the other side so I'm not in front of it. Okay. Uh, tell in the HTML, tell, I guess, the compiler to go grab and run, maybe, a specific script. Question mark? Uh, so I'm just putting the question marks to like indicate things that like I am 100% guessing about. Uh, okay, so uh, script tag HTML load a load JavaScript. That's what I'm looking for. File. Uh, adding JavaScript to an HTML file. That sounds right. Okay, so you can write it in the body of the script, which is what I've done so far. So that's what we've got in this uh, hello world that I still haven't renamed. We have the script here. But right now we've also got code that we wanna be able to use in other files. How do I do that? External JavaScript. Okay, it's written in a separate file and then link to HTML using a script tag with the source SRC attribute set. We can then imagine that the website has two files, index.html and main.js. The main.js file looks like this. Note that the code in the HTML file is the same, except the script tag has been moved to the head of the document and we're adding two attributes to it. First, we add the source attribute to indicate the file we want to load. This link can be either absolute or relative to the HTML file. In this example, it is a relative link. Uh, so our HTML file is in the same directory as the files we want to load. So we should be able to just use the file title. Uh, we also had to defer a tribute to the script tag. This one. What does that do? 
This tells the browser that it's okay to defer the execution of the script until it has finished rendering the HTML. We typically add either the async or defer attributes to script tags when loading external JavaScript files. The async attribute tells the browser it's okay to continue rendering the HTML and that it's okay to execute the script whenever the file has finished loading. That makes sense because this files shouldn't need to be needed until we actually enter some text and then trigger our functions to run. Um, Peter says, using the script tag to import these files runs them like your inline script. They shouldn't need to export things and you shouldn't need to use the import syntax. That makes sense. Okay, so I think what we need to do is actually we should have like a separate script. I think we should a separate script where these are imported. So I'm guessing you can have multiple scripts per page. I'm thinking that script is like P, right? Like paragraph in HTML and not like head in HTML. We'll find out. And whether or not that's the case will depend on how the document object model is specified. Yeah, see? Okay, made the syntax error go away. That's always a good first step. Uh, and then I guess my question is, which of these do I need to load in? Just this one, I think? Or probably both of them. This dot lexicon, this dot tags. Okay. Probably both of them, right? So let's try that. Okay, so script, and then it was SRC, and then that should be. Uh, in quotes, the path, which for us is just going to be uh, this, and then defer. And then I'm going to try doing another one. And I've added additional ones, and I haven't gotten any errors. So I'm just going to say that this is fine. Everything's working great, and we're doing a good job, and it's going to work fine. OK, and then, uh, but instead of part of speech tagger, I want this one to be the lexer. And hopefully they'll just sort of like load the lexicon and it'll work fine. And I guess we'll find out. Uh, don't forget you need to move your external scripts to the head. Oh, OK. So these need to be in the head. They can't be in the body. OK. So in this example here, they're in the head as well. OK. This is, this is good to know. And I do need all three. So I also need the lexicon. Make sure I'm out of the way. That one. OK. Helpful. Thank you, Peter. At all of you. First, we have to create the head because I deleted it because I figured I didn't need it. But no, I did in fact need it. Is that the right dash direction? I don't think it is. I think it's that one. Yeah, there we go. No, not you. All right. And then also the third one, which is the lexicon. And I don't think it matters what order I load these in, but well, I guess we'll find out, huh? Okay. Not you, but the lexicon. All right. Two going that way. Oh, right, because it's HTML. Uh, <laughs> one sec. How to add a comment in HTML. Listen, it's been a while since I just wrote HTML. It's been a minute. Uh, comments. You can use them by using the following syntax. There we go. All right. This loads in these. JavaScript files as if they had been written in line here. OK, that's what makes sense to me. So that's how I'm going to phrase it. OK, so now we should be able to use the functions from these files in our other function. And also, I don't think I need the bit with the node modules. I think I can just get rid of that. Let me move this off over. Because uh, we're not actually doing it from node. So I think I can just delete that. And we should be fine.
There we go. Okay. Uh, Angie says, you have a whole list of scripts at the bottom of the page if you have a document.load. I think that's correct. And they run when the page is loaded. A script can be called from a button or input with an on click function name or can't remember the text, maybe on change. Okay. Uh, apparently, uh, can you link that git book page in the chat? Sure can. Uh, it's from Sean R. Gitbooks.io. Practical introduction to just probably JavaScript is what that last bit says there. All right. So paste that in there. All right. So I think, so right now what we're doing to trigger the event is we've added an event listener click. And I think this is doing the same thing as on click does. Uh, I'm pretty sure. Um, also, I will add this to uh, the Git uh, my learning plan as well. Uh, more deets. here so that uh, I have it for reference in the future as well. Because uh, that was a helpful resource that explained things in a way that made sense to me. So the next thing that I should do is do 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 do. So now I should be able to just use these functions as if I had written them locally, I'm pretty sure. So let me check out the readme here and see what their example looks like bar words, new lexer.lex. This is some sample text is here. Okay. So what I'm going to try and do is, I don't actually need to do anything here, get rid of you. So what I'm going to try and do is I'm just going to try and put this in another script, right? And see if I get any errors. Uh, so let's try that. And I shouldn't need to do any more imports, I don't think, because it's been imported into the whole document. So as long as I'm within the same document, which is to say the same HTML thing, it should just work. OK, so now if I try to do stuff, he's here. Does it work? OK, that works. So far, so good. I didn't get any um, errors, although I don't know where I see the errors if I'd gotten them. So let me try uh, opening my debug and I still can see nothing. <laughs> helpful. Very helpful. Okay. Ugh. Uh, Peter says you should make sure the code still runs after adding the script tags. Yes, I think so far so good. Um, thank you. So I think what I want to do now is try to get the tags and maybe print the tags and see if that works. Um, let's try that. So it looks like everything is still running the way that I'm interested in having it run. So I don't need this anymore. I'm going to try and do another function. Uh, which I should probably give a name to, huh? Uh, so I'm going to call this function something do something. Um, find pronouns. I think that makes sense, right? Because what we're doing is we're trying to find the pronouns. And then what I can do is I can take the output of this um, and then I can do some more transformations on it. Um, Rachel, that sounds very functional. It sounds like you're doing things in a functional way and not a very object oriented way. <laughs> <laughs> Hush. Yes, I am. And I'm, you know, I'm okay with that. So this is the sample code we have. Dupe, dupe, dupe. Okay. We should also be indented. I know that the, the indenting doesn't matter because white space is uh, ignored, but it looks better to me. Uh, and also the console logging is doing nothing. I have no idea how to find the console. Um, it's somewhere. I can't see it. And we'll just take it from there. So. Back 
Actually, I guess let's just see if it still works uh, and if adding this new thing uh, has changed anything. It hasn't, good. Okay, so far so good. So now let's try, instead of this sample text, let's get this, this sample text, I guess. Oh, uh, wait. So this is called repeat input, but it's not really doing that anymore. Hmm. I think we just sort of put this in here, right? Um. Because <laughs> we want to replace doing everything with regular expressions with doing everything with not regular expressions if we can. Uh... And I don't think this loop is going to be super helpful right here. So I'm just going to set this to tagged words to see if we actually get the tagging happen. And we'll see if that works. OK. Fabulous. OK, that's what I expect. Um, so uh, oh, right, and that's still happening. <laughs> <laughs> the transformation is still happening. Uh, so I believe this is possessive. Let me pull up the pen tree bank code. Okay, it's working. Hey, I didn't stop to celebrate. It's working. So here we have the word and then the um, the part of speech tag. So that is fantastic. That's actually exactly what we're looking for. Uh, pen tree bank tag set. Please load. Right. Uh, and this is just from the first result when I clicked it. Uh, so we're looking at RB, which is an adverb. So however unusually naturally here and good here, it's, yep, that's an adverb. Uh, and then NNS, which is a noun plural, which is not the case. <laughs> uh, that should be a noun and then it should be split and it should be a noun and a verb. Um, but that's okay. This does not have to be perfect. Uh, yeah. Uh, Peter says party parrots. The parrot goes like this. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's working. So we imported code, which I'm delighted by. And um, obviously this approach would not work for a large project um, where you have complex dependencies and you want to manage them. But uh, that's not this. <laughs> this is not a large project. Okay, so some things I want to do. First of all, I want to change this function from repeat input to um, change pronouns, because eventually that's what we want it to do. It's not what it does right now, but you know what? We're we're gonna uh, try to manifest that <laughs> that our that our code's gonna do the thing that we want it to do in a little bit. Uh, you can get rid of this empty function what does nothing and then make sure that we're actually doing that there there we go nope i accidentally copied it instead of pasting it change pronouns is what we called it okay so if we try this again it's a big cat that likes pasta we should get a big list of words that has a bunch of uh tags next to it. Yeah, so JJ's adjective, cat is just noun. Um, that is uh, see, uh, a subordinator. So that as subordinator specifically uh, likes as a verb, pasta is a noun. So um, this is the word and this is whoop, this next thing out next to it is the other thing. Uh, also, it's still saying that um, all the possessives are plurals, which is fine. Um, we'll just deal with that later, I guess. So, so far so good. Seems to be working out. I'm at it for a while. Actually, let me double check that I'm not supposed to be somewhere else. I'm pretty sure we are good, but I just want to double check. Yeah, okay. Uh, and my dog hasn't gotten very excited about events yet. I can't say the event or he will get really excited uh, and I won't be able to work anymore. 
It starts with a W. I'll tell you that much. Um, so what do we do next? Okay, so now we have this object and we want to modify it. So now let's get that uh, loop that we got rid of and get it back in here. Because what we want to do is we want to go through and if the uh, the tag is, what is it, PPN, I think? Uh, PP here, personal pronoun, I, he, and it, or PPZ, possessive pronoun. So personal pronouns we want to turn into they, possessive pronouns you want to turn into their, uh, and I think that's pretty much everything we have. So I think what we should do is just how do you append? How do you append? Sorry, that's what that is. Um, try the name open browser preview ID browser description. Oh, in uh in the VS Marketplace. Um, yeah, we might do that in the future. Uh, for now, I think I've got enough information to try to start to figuring out the actual like NLP stuff. Uh, but thank you, I appreciate that. Okay, so the tagged words we don't actually care about, right? What we care about, also let's comment this out so we don't just like remove all the he's and change them to they's. Um, because again, I would prefer not to use regular expressions for this. So what I actually care about is the output text. So what I want to do is for I in, okay, so less, yesterday we learned about for and then of and then for and then in, so it's definitely in. I'm just going to copy this and we will see if we can make this work. So what do I want to do? For I in tag words, we're going to do something. Uh, I think this makes sense. So we're going to loop through, we're going to look at each one, and then we're going to do an if. And then, isn't that the, nope, it's the other direction. Can I tell the difference between the directions that the slashes go in? Absolutely, I cannot. Uh, this is consistently one of the things that uh, I run into with my dyslexia, is that I can't tell which directions the slashes should be going and which one they are going. Um, it also doesn't help that I work in both Linux and Windows, so... That's okay. That's what we've got, you know, code highlighting for. Syntax highlighting. Um, <laughs> new Xter says use Linux. I do. Um, I don't know if you've ever tried to do anything like very AV intensive from Linux, but I have lost literal months of my months of my life to doing that. Uh, and for streaming in particular, I've decided that I don't have the time, <laughs> uh, which is why I stream from Windows. Oh, right. I forgot I had electrolytes in the water and I was expecting plain water. It was like, strawberry, where'd that come from? I put it in there. That's the answer. Uh, so what I want to do, so check if the tag is PPN. Let me double check what the tags is. PPZ or PP. Uh, I listened to a podcast that has uh, a joke about that. Uh, PPZ. No, just PP. Because we, we care about PPG, we want to do different things if it's PP or PPZ. Uh, PPZ. Else don't change word. Okay, so if the tag is PP, right, then we want to change the word to... they if yes change word to there else don't change word uh all right and what i want to do is i want to append the word to the output and then i want to take do I need to create a new object for that? Probably. Declare a new object for our output. Uh, 
Yeah, just make sure you comment so uh, sl with the slash next to the right shift. Ah, so it is. I'm, I'm still not gonna remember that, but thank you. <laughs> um, I can teach you Linux if you want. I mean, I again, I've, I've used Linux for many years um, and I am uh, an enjoyer of Linux, but uh, if I ever have to work with audio codecs again, I will scream literally months, like literally months. Um, no, <laughs> no is the answer. I'm not doing it. Uh, I ain't. Uh, okay, so. Bow, 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 bow. Um. Loop through our tagged input. Okay, so bar output, what should we call it text output? Oh, let's call it text text out because we have a text in. All right, var text out equals ain't nothing. We're just gonna make it empty and it'll be an empty string and we'll append to it as a string. And I'm pretty sure we can just do that with like plus. I'm pretty sure we can just like concatenate right at the end. Um, so that should be good. I think we should be good there. So I don't actually have to treat it as an object. I can just treat it as a string. Uh, okay, so for <laughs> now I need this back again. Sorry, just gonna pop that right back in there. All right, uh, for I and tagged words, and I'm hoping that I can do uh, if else in JavaScript. And if I can't, I'll deal with that when I come to it, I guess. Um, okay, so uh, I think I do wanna do this, right? So every time we come to a new, item in the list, we change what this tagged word refers to, right? And these are all going to be indented. Okay. Uh, Gstreamer problems and OBS problems. Yes. Yep. Um, specifically, what I was doing was like, um, I was recording, uh, I was recording and playing audio tokens and I needed very low latency um, for, for phonetics experiments and um, it was a bad time. It was a very bad time. Okay, so mm -mm 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 -mm. Uh, all right, JavaScript, if else. So I'm seeing some words here that do not make me very excited to use this. Uh, the if statement executes a statement if a specified condition is truthy. What do y'all mean by truthy? Uh, a value that is considered true when encountered in a Boolean context. All other values are truthy unless they are defined as falsy. Uh, JavaScript uses type coercion in Boolean context. Examples of truthy values in JavaScript which will be coerced into true if for the Boolean context in this. Okay, I see why TypeScript exists now. <laughs> All right, I get it. Yeah, uh, God, this seems like a nightmare. Well, it's my dream, so we're gonna keep pushing forward. Oh. Uh. Didn't you use pipe wire? I don't think so. Also, this was several years ago. I have been out of graduate school for a bit now. Uh, all right, all right, all right, all right. Um, I also needed, like, again, very accurate reaction times for a phonetics experiment, which is, I realize this is not a use case that a lot of people have. Cool. Okay. Uh, but if else looks like the way that I expect it to. Uh, all right. And then the other one that I wanted to know is about else if. Great. Okay. Fabulous. So that is good. So we should be able to use that syntax. It should be pretty straightforward. Uh, so if. How do I do check if a string is the something? 
uh, how was it? Okay, so if tagged word one Oh, it's got to be in. It's got to be in. Uh, huh? PP. Wait, wait, hold up, hold up a second. We got to go back to thinking about truthy stuff. Examples of truthy values. Values is considered true when encountered in a Boolean context. All values are truthy unless they are designed as falsy. Why is this the way it is? I'm sure there's a very good reason. I'm sure there's a very good historical reason. I'm trying to find a uh, check if object is string. <laughs> uh, is check check if string contents contains substring javascript uh check if a string contains sp specific string php nope that's not what i'm looking for javascript We got Stack Overflow question. Uh, check if text is in a string. Okay. Uh, check if text is exactly in Java script. So I'm just looking for uh, answers, and I'm getting answers, but they're not answers to the questions I'm asking how to check whether a string matches a regex in javascript javascript if else statements okay and i, I know somebody mentioned that w3 schools are out of date but i'm hoping that this is still helpful if executed yes i'm i know how if else's work parameter values conditions less than 20 cool ah okay so it is equals equals great fabulous Uh, okay, and then uh, append to string Java script. Four ways to concatenate strings in JavaScript. Uh, that's my question. I need an account. Okay, well, I'll find the answer elsewhere else. Uh... uh and... You can do uh, plus equals, so we'll do that. That seems like a good thing to do. Uh, <laughs> Peter says, no, it's a bad historical reason. Oh, no. Um, OK, so and I don't think I actually need to. Let me look, let me look back at some of these, uh, the truthy stuff. Let me look back at some of these. OK, oh, yeah, that definitely has curly braces. I was like, if there's no curly braces, how does it know when to stop? Oh. And then we had, uh, I think it was Elif. Yeah, am I right? All right well, it didn't say no. Uh, and then, eh, eh. I know, I erased it else. Is that not how elif looked? Oh, it's else if. In one word keyword. There is no else if, and also I don't have enough uh, characters. Eh? Are you happy now? There's no condition. That's OK. We'll add one. How's that? There we go. OK, so. Uh, text out and then we're going to add uh, they. 
Otherwise, I'm just gonna indent this just for my just for my eyes to make my eyes happy. Uh, otherwise, we're gonna add there. One of these is wrong. This one looks right. We'll find out. Uh, otherwise, text out plus equals, and it should be uh, tagged word zero. Okay, so what this should do is, I realize I was just sort of like thinking really hard for a bit there. Uh, and also I've made my life hard. Okay, so who's your friend? You're down there. All right, who's your friend? You are from there, you are from there, you are from there, you are from there. I think you're extraneous. Maybe you also? Did I just like add a bunch of extras? I bet this is code completion. I bet code completion gave me a bunch of ones I don't actually need. But I think my indenting is good and it has in fact uh, made me happy uh, because I can see where I need to do things. All right, so what this should do is it should check the tag. And if the tag is PP for personal pronoun, it should be changed to they. If the tagged word is, tag is PPZ for possessive pronoun, it should be changed to there. Otherwise it should just be given the uh, thing. And then we wanna make sure that we actually return the text out. All right, let's see if this works. He is here. So this should be, they is here. So <laughs> okay. Mm, okay. Um, so we do have a little bit of a, <laughs> we do have a little bit of a problem. Uh, it is in fact doing something, but it's not exactly doing what I'm looking for it to do. Okay. So let's, let's double check. Uh, oh, I think that actually this should be double like so. Okay. I think we need to check for equivalence. So, uh, he is here with his friend. So if this is working, they should become, he should become they, and he should become there. He is here with his friend. So this should add spaces. Okay, cool. Um, the problem that we have here is that when the tag matches one of these tags, the thing is not changed. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is, because we are not, never triggering this category, we're never tri triggering this category, is I'm instead of printing out the word, I'm gonna print out the tag. Uh, he is here with his friend, and I'm also gonna copy this, because it's the likelihood, the most likely thing is that it's giving me a slightly different tag set than the one that I think it's giving me. Okay, PRP, PRP dollar sign. All right, I think, we done solved this problem. So this should be PRP and this should be PRP dollar sign. Oop. And the reason it changed everything today the first time is that I was using assignment rather than um, equivalence. And because the assigned object looked truthy, it got defined as true. Ugh. Uh. You says, if you don't know JavaScript, what are you doing in Raza? Um, we are code bases in Python. <laughs> but that's, that's the answer. Um, so now it should be, they is here with their friend. Oh, right, except we should change this back to this. Uh, all right. Mm-hmm. 
Okay, that's right. So if I change this to zero, which should be the word, right? Let's equals a tag word. And this was definitely working before. What's wrong? They easier with different? Nothing. Okay, I don't know why we got undefined from, but it's working. So now we should be able to do like she, he, uh, he, she, it, they, hers, his. Oh, this is a, okay. This is a known bug. Um, sorry, this is this is a problem with the tag set that hers is uh, not um, not tagged as possessive. Uh, there's actually like a big discussion about this in NLP Twitter a couple of years ago. So uh, JavaScript has string interpretation. Dollar sign might be the problem. I think it works. I don't know. I think I probably should have just closed the browser and reopened it. And there's a little bit of a um, um, delay between me and the uh, the screen. Uh, <laughs> uh, Peter says true. Yeah, a little bit. I mean, also I have a, a lot of specialized knowledge in, in data science, machine learning, and natural language processing in particular. Uh, yeah. Okay. So far, so good. Honestly, I, this is doing pretty well. This is basically what I wanted it to do. Um... Yeah, and actually let's do one more thing that will make it unusable. No, never mind, never mind. I was just gonna say what we could do is we could look at any words that start with a uh, a capital letter and then replace that with redacted, but I think that's just gonna make this um, very unpleasant. Um, yeah, okay. Honestly, I think we're done. I think this is a successful uh, project. I'm drinking water with electrolytes. Uh, I think this is a really successful project. Um, yeah, I've definitely learned a lot about JavaScript. Uh, I like. I think I, I told you all at the beginning of this project, I have no interest in becoming uh, a front-end person, not because it is not good, important work, but because I think uh, I would not be happy. <laughs> Uh, I, don't, I don't think it's it's for me. I, I tend to prefer the machine learning engineering sides of things, but uh, this was super helpful. Um, I definitely learned a lot. Um, I don't know, hopefully this is helpful for somebody out there who has pronouns they want replaced in a body of text. Um, yeah, actually let, let's try with a little bit of a longer piece of text and see if we can get something good. Um, uh, let's see, the rainbow story. I'm pretty sure the rainbow story has a fair number of uh, uh, fair number of, of pronouns. It's just a, a story used for um, text solicitation or like speaking elicitation. So I just am going to copy a bunch of text from it. Give it a shot. The quarrel, I'll claim that they were the best. The most important was said clearly, I am most important, I am the sign of life and of hope. Hmm. Uh, so I and you are not being correctly identified here. So that's maybe a little bit of a problem, actually. Um, so it's working for our simple examples. Let's take a look at the tags again real quick and see what the tags for some of these things are. Uh, it's going to be real hard without the words, huh? Uh, Hmm. Ah, that's a problem. Okay, so there's some pretty big problems with these uh, these tags. So here I is being uh, identified as just like a noun. And if I replaced all nouns with they, um, text would be unreadable. So this wouldn't do anonymization. It would do um, <laughs> uh, being bad at making text output, I guess. It would be like a the scrambler, a D label, unable to be read and processed by a humanizer. All right. Um, so I think I'm just gonna have a little, uh, and has the same problem. 
and is based on a uh, tag set with some issues. Hers and I aren't tagged as pronouns, for example. Okay. Um, okay, not perfect. I don't really want to go through and fix their tag sets, but it does kind of work. And you know what? For my very first JavaScript project, I'm pretty happy. I learned a lot about JavaScript. Um, Ooh, wait, one sec. <laughs> Let me fix it so it does the thing I said it does and not something else. What it don't do. Uh, there we go. So now that should go. Yeah. Uh, oh, so you can see here, uh, instead of saying he to they, it says they to they. Oh, and it's actually uh, also, you see how there's like extra spaces in this text? Like there weren't spaces between the E and the G and the spaces here, but there are here. Um, so this is like a fun little bit to see where the token boundaries are and that punctuation is treated as tokens, uh, which is, I think, not uh, clear. Are you German? Nope. I am not German. I am from the United States. I live in Seattle. All right. Yeah, I think I'm pretty happy with this. Um, and we did have a couple things I wanted to, to look up. So let's look into those real quick in my learning doc. Um, and also this, uh, uh, the, the license has been updated as well. So be aware if you're gonna use this code, it is under uh, the G of this license. I cannot remember the uh, specific abbreviation for it. Okay, so a couple things I wanted to look up for. Uh, what is a prototype? Because I've been seeing this a lot. Um, so if I look in here, nope, that's just the, uh, so here, like there's this object and it has this prototype property and I don't really know what that is. So I'm gonna look up to it, look up to it, look it up. JavaScript prototype. All right. Object prototypes. Prototypes is the mechanism by which JavaScript objects inherit features from one another. Okay, so it's for future inheritance. In this article, we explain how prototype chains work and look at how the prototype property can be used to add methods to existing constructors. Yeah. LGPL. Yeah, that sounds right. But it's also got like, I think it might be three. Uh, I'm pretty sure there's a, some fairly big differences between two and three. Uh, JavaScript is often provide, described as a prototype-based language, language to provide in, oh, I think it's about time for me to be done, but I do want to wrap this up first. Uh, to provide inheritance, objects can have a prototype object, which acts as a template object that it inherits methods and properties from. Okay, so objects have an object within them called a prototype object. An object's prototype object may also have a prototyped object, which it inherits methods and properties from, and so on. This is often referred to as a prototype chain and explains why different objects have properties and methods defined on other objects available to them. Okay, so this is... Let's see. So string is a built-in, I feel pretty confident saying. Uh, move myself to the side. Uh, and then prototype string constructor, prototype string property returns true if a sequence of elements search string is converted to a string at the same, otherwise returns false. Okay, so these are, okay, but it is defining them here. So I think this is adding, I think this is adding a function starts with to string so then if you do other things with objects that include string, you can inherit from the prototype. So if something's not in the prototype, it can't be inherited, I think. Uh, in JavaScript, a link is made between the object instance and its prototype, its proto property, which is derived from the prototype property on the constructor and the property and methods are found by walking up the chain of prototypes. Note, it's important to understand that there's a distinction between an object's prototype, 
or via the deprecated proto property and the prototype property on constructor functions. The constructor function foobar has its own prototype, which can be found by calling object get prototype of foobar. However, this differs from its prototype property, which is the blueprint for instances of this constructor function. Okay, so foobar dot prototype will be inherited by all objects constructed using foobar, but foobar itself also has prototypes that do not get passed on to the things it constructs. That makes sense to me. If we were to create a new instance, it would take the prototypes from its constructor functions prototypes property. Thus, object dot get prototype of foo instance equal equal was super equivalent. I don't know what the third one means to foo bar dot prototype. Okay, we've defined a construction. Uh, a constructor function. Okay, so this makes an object named person that has information associated with it. Then we create a new instance and, you know, populate it. If you type person one into the JavaScript console, you should see, again, do not know where to get this in my current uh, IDE setup. Um, in your JavaScript console, you should see the browser is trying to autocomplete this with the member names available for this object. Okay, so these member names come from the constructor. In this list, you should see the members defined on the person one constructor, person. You will, however, see some other members, two string value of, that are defined on the person's one's prototype object's prototype object, which is object dot prototype. Oh, so it does. Okay, so when I set up here that, um, the uh, the prototype of the constructor function isn't passed on. It is as well, I think. Well, I think this is deeper in the weeds than I need to get. Uh, so what I'm going to add in my little learning plan here <laughs> is uh, the way that Java script handles inheritance, uh, all the proto mm. prototype dot whatever gets constructor gets passed on to objects con constructed using object constructor. I think that's about as much detail as I need at this point, especially since I don't really <laughs> intend to use uh, JavaScript that much in the coming, uh, coming couple of days or weeks, whatever. Okay. So also I want to rename this um, to pronoun replacer. So let's check in with our learning plan. Um, we were pretty, uh, we did definitely got this working. Um, we actually did not need to do search and replace. We just iterated through and it was super fast uh, and the loops weren't a problem. Uh, so we did that. We also did the pronoun replacement. We didn't end up using a lookup table. Uh, we didn't include neo pronouns. Uh, ended up just looping through the tagged uh, the POS tag text and replacing dependent 
on the prone on the BOS tag. Uh, all personal pronouns to today. Okay. Uh, so that's what we ended up doing. Uh, and we looked up the things. Uh, and if we go all the way back up to our learning goal, uh, we didn't actually uh, end up doing the detect and removal of proper names, but we did do the pronoun replacement uh, rules-based lookup, uh, ended up using POS tagging uh, to do that, which I think is actually probably, I mean, that is rules-based lookup basically. Um, and I think that was probably the most efficient way to do that. Um, and I was talking about maybe we can do something with like sequence to sequence and um, some more deep learning methods. But again, specifically for the pronouns, that just does not make sense, especially since there are much lighter weight ways to do it. Uh, and yeah, so I think we've pretty much uh, completed our, our learning goal. Um, yeah, so this is all gonna be, uh, I mean, it's already open source. I'll push um, right after uh, I finish the stream. And you'll be able to find all the code at my GitHub. It's on that side. At my GitHub, if you want to check it out or use it, um, it's under this license. So, oh, yeah, it is version three. Um, so as long as you abide by the terms of the license, you should be good to go. And yeah, this was super helpful for me. I definitely learned a lot. I think I have a lot better understanding of JavaScript. Um, if, you know, someone uh, was working on a machine learning project and it needed, like, help, I could definitely look at the code and sort of, like, figure out what's going on. I say that now, but having learned something about the web frameworks, uh, the likelihood that it was going to look very unlike um, the sort of like very basic JavaScript that I wrote is pretty high, but I think I could figure it out, right? And like, I know some resources and um, yeah. So uh, yeah, I think I'm happy. I think uh, we've completed our, our basic JavaScript journey together. Um, future streams. Uh, it's kind of up in the air at the moment what I'm going to be doing. I'm probably going to be offline most of next week, but next Friday, I'm still planning for it. Um, I have a very fun plan that I will announce on Twitter. Uh, so keep your eyes peeled for that. I'm still figuring out like everyone's schedule that's involved and making sure everything works out. Um, but I'm really looking forward to it. So, um, keep your eyes peeled and I will be probably doing my usual, uh, Tuesday stream, which is at 4.30, just doing something. Who knows? Could be anything. Or I might take it off because I'm I'm technically on vacation. So, uh, all right. Thanks so much for joining me today, folks. I hope this was helpful. <laughs> Thank you for all the help in the chat. Ow. Uh, I'll try not to stub my fingers on my desk. Thank you for all the help in the chat. And uh, yeah, I'll see you when I see you. Uh, and thanks for following me along on this journey. I'll talk to you later.